Despite their defeat in the First Northern War and retreat across the Yoruga River, Emperor Emir of Nilfgaard immediately started making preparations for the next invasion by implementing another purge, this time killing the generals and commanders who led the failed campaign to replace them with a new generation of young warriors, eager to prove themselves in battle. Believing another war was inevitable, the northern monarchs Vizimir II of Redania, Meave of Lyria and Rivia, Foltest of Temeria, Demavend of Edirne, and Hensalt of Kedwin attended a secret meeting at Hague Castle in 1267 AR. Devising a plan to strike the first blow, the kings of Edirne and Kedwin were first tasked with clearing their lands of non-human rebels like the Scoia'tael. Next, they were to send troops into the castles along the border with Nilfgaard. And lastly, Demavend was to prepare a special unit to perform a false flag operation, attacking a northern stronghold with troops dressed in Nilfgaardian armor. Using this event as a justification, the northern kings could descend upon the south in full force, taking back the lands lost in the previous war. As for the missing princess, Cyrilla, sole heir to Queen Calanthe, the monarchs concluded she needed to die, as they believed the emperor wanted her to solidify his control over Sintra. Learning of the meeting and plan through his vast spy network, Emir preemptively sent a large army under Field Marshal Menno Kohorn to occupy fortresses along the border, waiting for their chance to strike. However, King Vizimir had his own great spy network through his head of intelligence, Sigismund Dykstra, discovered that enemy troops were being prepared because their plans were leaked, and so sent a messenger with all haste to Demavend in Edirne, asking him to delay the false flag attack because the Empire knew it was coming. Unfortunately, the royal messenger, Applegat, was killed by Scoia'tael and never delivered the warning. With the stage set for conflict, a great sorcerer's meeting was held on the Isle of Thaned and soon turned to violence when Philippa Eilhart and those loyal to the north preemptively arrested the elves and those suspected of allying with the south. Yet there was a third faction present as well, led by Tessiah de Vries, who believed loyalty to the Brotherhood was paramount, admonishing Philippa as she did not see any evidence that those under arrest were traitors. Casting a spell, Tessia freed them, only to immediately learn she was sorely mistaken. Among the liberated was the elf Francesca Findebert, who ran to open the gates, allowing an army of Scoia'tael to descend upon them. Another of the traitors was the powerful Vilgeforts, who used the opportunity to try and capture Princess Ciri, who was brought into the middle of this chaos by the sorceress Yennefer of Vengeberg. After escaping Sintra during the First Northern War, Ciri was taken in by a peasant family until Destiny reunited her with Geralt of Rivia, who in time came to be viewed as her adopted father. Taking her to the wolf school of Kaer Morin, Ciri was trained as a witcher, but her instructors were unprepared to deal with her powerful magical abilities, as she sometimes went into a trance and made dire prophecies about the future. To understand what was happening, Geralt sent for his friend, the sorceress Triss Marigold, who came to Kaer Morin and helped look after the girl, soon seeing her as a younger sister. Although Triss identified her as a source, one of those born with innate magical abilities, she did not know enough about this subject, and with no other choice left to him, Geralt contacted his former lover, Yennefer of Vengeberg. Taking over the girl's education, Yennefer soon became her adopted mother, as the two traveled together, training in the magical arts. After spending some time in a temple school, Ciri was meant to attend the Academy of Aretuza, where her abilities could truly be explored. Yet before they arrived, Yennefer's former teacher, Tessiah de Vries, asked that Ciri be brought to the meeting on Thanid, as she not only represented a political prize, but also a magical one, and so might serve to unite the disparate factions of the Brotherhood. Instead, Ciri fell into a trance and delivered a dire prophecy in front of the sorcerers, resulting in further chaos and bloodshed. Learning that Ciri was in danger, Geralt tore through Thaned, killing soldiers and sorcerers alike, until he was finally defeated and nearly killed by Vilgeforts. Yennefer was also incapacitated by the elves and taken away, leaving Ciri to flee to the Tower of the Gulls, where her elder blood activated an unstable portal, transporting her far into the east. Lost and alone, Ciri suffered greatly and so latched onto the first group to accept her, which was a gang of outlaws called the Rats. After Thanid, the Brotherhood was gone, and so Tessia de Vries killed herself in disgrace, while the elves under Francesca Findebert were now openly allied with Nilfgaard, and those following Philippa Eilhart remained loyal to the north. Yet the Thanid coup was not the only great event to occur that night, as King Vizimir of Redania was assassinated, while further east, a Lyrian fort was attacked by soldiers dressed in Nilfgaardian armor, officially beginning the Second Northern War. 
In Redania, the sorceress Philippa Eilhart and head of intelligence Sigismund Dijkstra ran the country from behind the scenes and began a purge of all those who might be loyal to the Empire. In Temeria, Foltis lost faith in magic users and expelled them from his lands. Wanting to regain the power lost to them, Philippa started a new organization named the Lodge of Sorceresses, a woman's only society dedicated to the preservation and prosperity of magic across the continent. Inviting representatives from the North, Nilfgaard, the Elves, and even the neutral states, this Council of Ten began to manipulate events from the shadows, greatly influencing how the war and future of the continent developed. In regards to Ciri, they plan to make both her and Yennefer members of the Lodge in order to train the girl to become a queen and leader of their organization. After the attack in Lyria and declaration of war, Nilfgaard marched their massive army beyond the Yoruga, quickly conquering Lyria and Rivia, forcing their queen to flee north. Next, they invaded Edirn, winning the Battle of Aldersburg and capturing the city of Vengerberg before King Demavend fled into Redania. Queen Meave, meanwhile, gathered as many as she could and returned south to start a guerrilla campaign against Nilfgaard, launching ambush attacks in the forest and mountains. Having made rapid advancements in the war, it now appeared as though their victory may be inevitable, and so King Hensult entered into a secret agreement with the Emperor, allowing Kedwin to send soldiers into the north of Edirn to pretend they are liberating their allies, while their true purpose was to sit out the war. With the ancient elven lands of Dol Blathana now under imperial control, they were gifted to Queen Francesca Findeber to rule as a puppet of the south. With the east all but defeated, the kings of the west were terrified, and so Verden surrendered, declaring for the south, while Temeria signed a non-aggression treaty, which was broken just a few weeks later when Nilfgaard invaded Bruges, their vassal state. Love The Witcher or any other series? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up now and get one free audiobook and two Audible originals, or else give the gift of membership to someone you know. If you prefer to read your stories, then click on the link to the Kindle Unlimited plan and get access to as many ebooks as you want. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the excellent Witcher audiobooks, narrated by Peter Kenny, including the main novels and short stories which accompany the series. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Admiral Flint, Sir Rick Lone, Sir Bob of the Buoy, and Average Soul. If you'd like to help the channel, go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can sign up and gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series Heroes of Lore and Legend.